Hello, it's Philip Taylor from Richmond Green Chambers speaking, and I'm looking at a book from uh, Wildy Simmons and Hill Publishing. It's a book called Intolerance by Brian Harris, Queen's Council, subtitled Divided Societies on Trial. That's the book there. Just over 300 pages long. It, it runs, sort of written as a narrative of uh, a number of courtroom dramas and trials. There are some, uh, well, actually some pictures, and at the back there is a useful little index covering the main points. The book itself is quite a heavy book for a hardback. It's got a lot of detail in, and it's very interesting because we will have heard during our legal training, I'm sure, mention of some of these cases, and probably not been too familiar with some aspects of them. From a jurisprudential point of view, I think it's a, a, a very well-crafted book. This is the Flickr review, which my wife Elizabeth and I have written, and we've given it the title, The Bitter Fruits of Intolerance Through the Ages, and that's really what this book is looking at. We live in such a tolerant age, in such a tolerant society, or do we? Intolerance by Brian Harris, Queen's Counsel, examines entertainingly and penetratingly the most famous, or rather infamous, cases of intolerance to have occurred over the last three and a bit centuries. Focusing on Western European culture, the author's chosen instances of man's intolerance towards and persecution of those who dare to question, differ or dissent from prevailing opinions or creeds. The inherent warning here is that what has happened in the past just might be repeated in the future. Again, there are plenty of precedents. This is really quite unputdownable as a book and thought-provoking. One of the latest from Wilder's growing library of titles which builds a fascinating picture in this instance of intolerance by looking at eight notorious examples of it from the Salem Witch Trials of 1692 to the trial of firebrand ab abolitionist John Brown, 1859, to the Oscar Wilde 1895 trials and the celebrated Monkey Trial of John Scopes in 1925 the ramifications of which continue to reverberate in Bible Belt America to this day. Then there's the Chatterley Affair of 1960, in which uh, we saw the venerable uh, Penguin books being hauled into court on obscenity charges. I can remember well all the problems that that created in the late 60s. As Leaf Kill a Man as Kill a Good Book, thundered John Milton, in his eloquent anti-censorship tract, the Aeropagjakian, in 1644, although what the arch-Puritan Milton would have thought of Lady Chatterley we wouldn't care to speculate. In the event, it took another 50 years or so, post Aeropagjakian, for censorship to be abolished in England, a mighty blow against intolerance, and in favour of freedom of speech and of the press. Whilst admitting the difficulties of classifying the different forms of intolerance, Brian Harris makes the attempt anyway, identifying other intolerances of dissent, of sexual deviancy, literary intolerance, that's censorship, religious bigotry, to which might be added ideological and political bigotry, and the one he regards as the most interesting of all, the intolerance of those who do bad things with good intent. A fragile plant is civilised society, comments the author, depending as it does on the willingness of its members to cooperate and live in reasonable harmony with each other. What he calls irrational intolerance on the part of terrorists, governments or individuals is the greatest threat to this harmony. Well, it's a point of view, even though you might argue that intolerance, even irrational intolerance, is there any other kind, is not necessarily the only or even the prime motivating factor behind evils like human slavery, terror or war. Nonetheless, Intolerance is a fascinating read which must, uh, with much historical anecdote and insightful comment, which should inspire any number of debates, arguments and disputes, not just among the legal fraternity, but among a much wider readership, in, indeed the bitter fruits through the ages. So thank you very much to Wildy um, and also to Brian Harris for producing what is a really interesting and thoughtful read. Bye-bye.